Hello and welcome to another episode here on my channel. My name is Kevin Small and today we have an insider update on Avowed, the new RPG by Obsidian Entertainment. And this was posted by Windows Central slash Jess Gordon. And he apparently not only had the chance to talk with an insider source, but also see the game in action. Now, if you are interested to see what exactly Jess Gordon has to say about Avowed, uh, you can find the whole article down below in the video description if you want to click on it. If you don't want to do that, well, just stay in the channel and listen to me because we will talk about it and I will also showcase the article. One last thing, if you hope to see any gameplay here on Avowed, then I have to disappoint you. Yeah, there's no gameplay I can show you and there's also no gameplay coming from Windows Central. So we still have to wait a little bit longer till we finally see the game in action. But I think we are already getting a good idea on what Avowed is. Now, let's have a look at the article, shall we? And this is where it gets interesting. So we were told Avowed will feature multiple class play styles and borrow from Skyrim's two-handed combat system. You could wield two daggers and be a stealthy rogue or dive into archery with a two-handed bow. You could use a combination of swords and magic or go full two-handed magic, which is required to wield some of the game's more potent spells and abilities. Avowed will feature many elements Pillars of Eternity fans will be familiar with. Wizard spells like Jolting Touch, which can fry enemies with a fork of lightning, will be present. Two-handed spells like Fireball are conjured using a complex-looking hand gesture, but decimates enemies in a storm of magma and fire. I also saw status effect spells like Fedit Cares, Caris, imbuing enemies with corrosive poison. Weapon enchantments seem to be a big feature too, with magically enchanted swords and frozen arrows as examples. Pillar-style guns might also appear in the game, similar to the muskets and acribues found in the original two titles. Familiar creatures such as the lizard-like saurips will appear, alongside much larger and deadlier threats, all the way up to wyverns and drakes. The combat seems to be more loadout-based than the Elder Scrolls, which gives you a mountains of spells in a gigantic list. Warriors will get access to more physical attacks like swordplay, powerful kicks and shield bashes, while casters will be given a range of spellbook options to customize and tailor their combat style with text bound to specific buttons. I'm a huge Pillars of Eternity fan, me too by the way, and seeing stills of Avowed early build filled me with a ton of excitement. As much as I love the tactical combat of Pillars, seeing the classic CRPG add new dimensions with action-oriented combat is undoubtedly going to bring in a whole legion of new fans to the franchise. I think fans of The Outer Worlds should be particularly excited too. In The Outer Worlds, if The Outer Worlds was Obsidian's take on the Fallout style game, Avowed is undoubtedly Obsidian's take on The Elder Scrolls. The two-handed first-person combat style is unmistakable, but there are obvious differences in early documentation. At least directly compared to the likes of Skyrim and Oblivion, Avowed seems to be a far more colorful game, reminding me far more of The Outer Worlds. Luminescent cave mushrooms, verdant forests awash with giant flora and hulking sunlit temples, complete with skeleton-infested depths and tombs, are plentiful. It came as a bit of a surprise, given the game's original trailer, which seemed like it was trying to strike a much darker tone, save for the neon spell effects. Pillars of Eternity does seem to take an environmental interactivity a bit further than the outer words, I think he means about. You, you get the idea, they're using environmental interactivity, complete with swimming capabilities. We have even heard of destructible environments using lit torches and fire spells to burn down blocked entryways too. Fire spells leave areas coated in flames too, which cascade against walls and floors. The content I saw does represent a pre-alpha state with certain aspects like lighting and textures not fully implemented, which is one reason I'm not sharing the documentation I've been shown. 
The finished art style is expected to elevate what we saw in the Outer Worlds, though with a brighter, more lively color palette. Although it could end up looking a bit darker, keen to the debut trailer, I only saw a couple of areas. Although it could represent the diversity of local styles, Obsidian aims to deliver. As for the story and layout, I can only speculate. I'm not sure wherever it will go full-blown open world like the modern Elden Scrolls games or utilize something more like the Outer Worlds hub system which connects large areas with an overworld map, complete with interior areas and dungeons. I'd expected it to be the latter, as it gives Obsidian greater control over the pacing of the narrative, which is one of the studio's biggest strengths. There is some evidence that it might go fully open world though, given previous job listing. Thanks for the tip, come on a Tom. Even in its pre-alpha state, Avowed looks like it plays extremely well, with refined action RPG combat set in a vibrant, medieval fantasy world I cannot wait to explore. I feel like there's a good chance we'll see Avowed in a playable state by E3 2022, at the latest given the quality of the content I have seen, which may even be several months old at this point. Perhaps there's even a small chance we'd see it at the Game Awards at the end of the year. I teased on in my podcast recently that I bet money that we see another Xbox exclusive, Hellblade 2, at the Game Awards this year, since I have indeed heard that it was in the plan to show more of the game by the end of the year. Perhaps we could get a two-for-one deal and see a wow show up there too, but it may be too early just yet. Either way, Avowed went from relative obscurity in my list of most anticipated Xbox games to sitting near the top. Especially as a big fan of the Outer Worlds, Obsidian's excellent character writing and penchant for branching narratives, combined with the rich world of Eternity, gives Avowed some seriously huge potential and I can't wait to see the game fully revealed. So. That's basically what he was talking about regarding the game. And it's good to hear. I'm really surprised that they're going for a lighter tone in general. Because, as he said, the trailer we have all seen was very dark, very grim. There wasn't like a lot of colorization like you saw the background, right? Like the sky was gray and every every color in that trailer was basically just... How gray can we make it? Yes. So, yeah, I'm, I'm actually happy to see that they're going a little bit more with the colorful way of the game. Especially when you are looking at Pillars of Eternity 2 in comparison. Uh, not so much 1. 1 was also relatively dark. But Pillars of Eternity 2 became much, much more lighter in tone. And I enjoyed that. So, I don't, I don't really mind which way they're going because I think both of them seems to be fitting. And the gameplay sounds interesting. Like, I would love to see a somewhat Elder Scrolls game in a little bit of a smaller world. They tried something similar with Morrowind back in the day. Yes, Morrowind was big, don't get me wrong. But in comparison to, let's say, a Skyrim or even Oblivion, Morrowind was still a, li a little bit more condensed. And I would love to see that too. So, yeah, this sounds fantastic. Especially because we haven't really seen much yet of the game, right? Like, it's always a problem I have with CG trailers. Like, as amazing as they look and as cinematic they are, um, they don't really tell us much about the game itself. Like, sure, we can, we have some conclusions, we have some thoughts about it, but we never really get, like, any concrete information about what are we looking at here, right? So, it's good to hear that the game is developing and that it seems like to be a really, really good RPG. Especially because, <laughs> let's be real here, before we see a new Skyrim, or, well, new Elder Scrolls, um, it will probably take another four to five years, if we are lucky, 
before we are seeing a new one. So we are getting a vout in like one or two years. Um, I'm I am more than happy with that. Just saying. So yeah, and especially after New World, like New World was one of the best games in 2020, 2020, 2019. I think it came out in 2019, right? Yeah. Oh my, dates. Time is running. And it was just an amazing game. I I nearly did a second playthrough of the game. I nearly finished the second playthrough. Um, it, it was fantastic. So I'm looking forward to whatever this game becomes. Especially the fighting sounds really interesting, really neat. I always felt a bit like that the Elder Scrolls games need more abilities. Um, but then again, we didn't really get like an Elder Scrolls game in, in years. So... We will see how that improved. But yeah, that sounds pretty amazing. And I cannot wait to see more of it. Uh, thank you definitely, Mr. Jess Gordon, for keeping us informed here. And tell us a little bit more of the game. But I will definitely be back when we get more information. Hopefully official ones. That would, that would be neat if we are getting actually something uh, we can go by. Like... Gameplay trailer, maybe, hopefully. Game Awards. Let's hope for it. But thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you're on your way out, I would appreciate if you might leave a like. And well, if you didn't like this video for whatever reason, there's a dislike button right next to it. And also, if you're new to the channel, you want to see more gaming news, reaction to trailers, gameplay, tips and tricks and the whole gaming shebang, then I would also appreciate if you might consider to subscribe to the channel. It will help me out a great deal, and it's also for free. And if you subscribe to the channel, please don't forget to click the bell icon, because if you don't do that, you will never ever hear from me ever again. Like, it's weird how YouTube works, but basically subscribing and not Clicking the bell icon means you are never getting any information when I upload a new video. And you might think, hmm, when did Mole actually do its last video? It must have been months. And then I'm uploading a video every day. And it's like, well, I'm here. I'm uploading stuff. But YouTube didn't inform you. So don't forget to ring the bell. Thank you so much for watching. Hope I see you next time. Stay safe.